Hi, I'm Wolf McNally, and I'm going to give you an overview of the Envelope command line interface tool. As a quick refresher, the Envelope is a recursive structure, so envelopes contain envelopes. And it's what we're calling a smart document, and you'll see why as I proceed here. But basically, an envelope consists of a subject, which is also an envelope, and a set of assertions, zero or more assertions. And assertions themselves consist of a predicate, which is an envelope, and an object, which is an envelope. The basic form of an envelope is what would be called a semantic triple, like Alice knows Bob, subject, predicate, object. So we're going to spend most of this talk in the terminal. And this is a Mac. The envelope command line tool is currently written in Swift. It runs on Macs. But the envelope structure itself is based on CBOR, which is the common binary object representation. It's like JSON, but in binary. And another structure you're going to see a lot is the UR, the uniform resource. If you just type envelope from the command line and just press return, it's going to hang because it's waiting to read an envelope from standard in. So generally speaking, you don't type it by itself. But if you type envelope help, then you get the basic help for the envelope tool. And as you can see, it has a variety of subcommands. So the basic structure is you enter the, the command you want and then the other necessary parameters for that command. The first thing I'm going to show you is how you would create a basic envelope. And to do this, I'm just going to type envelope, subject, and I'm going to type a string, hello. And as you can see, the output of this is a UR. UR stands for uniform resource, it has a type, and then it has a string of characters after it, which are an ASCII encoded version of the CBOR object. If you're just using CBOR, you can use it directly if you just need binary. But if you ever want to transmit these things either in text or as QR codes, because URs are especially optimized for use with QR codes, but they can be used for all kinds of other things too, then UR is a great format for this because it's human readable. It is also a well-formed URI. You're probably familiar with the most common form of URIs, which are URLs. So this is probably one of the simplest envelopes. It's just a plain text string encoded. So I'm going to create a string variable here which has a, a longer envelope in it. It's called uh, Alice Knows Bob. It's another UR. It's a little bit longer. And then the next thing I'm going to ask the envelope tool to do is to format that. And there's a format command, but it's the default command. So I don't really need to enter it pretty much ever. So if I just ask it to format the Alice Knows Bob, then I get an output like this. This is called envelope notation. And in this case, you see the this is the subject, the predicate, and the object. And because there can be more than one assertion, and remember an assertion is a predicate and an object together, if there's additional lines here, those are the additional assertions. Now the first envelope I created up here has no assertions on it, it's just the subject. So if I type envelope and then enter the envelope directly on the command line, I get back just the subject, hello. So the format you see here is called envelope notation. And in the case when you just say envelope and then an envelope you are, you get back the, the entire envelope, a human readable representation. It's not the binary representation, it's not round trippable, it's not the full representation of the CBOR, but it's designed so you can get an idea of the overall structure of the envelope very quickly. But sometimes what you want to do is you want to extract parts of the envelope. And the easiest thing to extract in an envelope is its subject. So if I say envelope, extract, Alice knows Bob, I get back just the bare string that is the subject. Now, so far, I've been working with strings, but if you ask for help, envelope help subject, and this is the command we used above to create the first hello string, then we see that it has a couple subcommands, single and assertion. So you can create an assertion, which is a predicate object pair, or you can create a, a new envelope with just the given subject. So let's ask for help on that. Envelope help subject single. And now we see that there's a whole bunch of data types that are supported by this. A string is the default. This is the one that we've been using. But there's all kinds of other data types, and I'm still adding new ones for integers, dates, various kinds of data, and of course, any arbitrary CBOR that you'd like to include. So envelope is a very flexible structure, and it's binary at its core, even though I'm going to be working a lot with strings here in this demonstration. And just like the subject command lets you work with data types, the extract command also lets you work with data types. So if I said envelope extract and the type envelope from the Alice knows Bob, I get back another envelope. This is not the same envelope as I got back before. Let's format that envelope 
and then that format. And you see it's just the subject. It's Alice. And it, you see it's surrounded by quotes. That means this is envelope notation. If it weren't surrounded by quotes, it would just be the actual bare subject. And again, this will become clear as we continue. So how would we create an envelope with an assertion? So here we say envelope subject Alice, and then we're using the, the Unix pipe character here. So we're going to pipe it to another invocation of envelope where we're going to say assertion, and then we're going to add an assertion knows Bob. And so we're going to basically going to recreate that original Alice knows Bob envelope. And in fact, if I say echo Alice knows Bob, you see it is in fact the exact same envelope that we just recreated. And for example, if I copy this line, let's use history here, and then pipe that to envelope again, remember that format is the default, we get the same envelope notation back. So envelope includes a number of different ways of working with assertions. So if we type envelope help assertion, it's got add, uh, one which is what we've already used, it's the default, this is envelope assertion add. You can count the assertions, you can retrieve the assertion at a particular index, you can return all the assertions, or you can find an assertion uh, matching particular criteria, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay, so now let's talk about digests. So an envelope, and every part of an envelope, produces a unique digest. So if we type this command, envelope digest, Alice knows Bob, we get back a different kind of UR, a UR crypto digest, and this is the encoded Blake 3 hash of the entire envelope. And so you recall that when we did this before, envelope extract, envelope, Alice knows Bob, we got back just the subject of the envelope as an envelope. If we pipe that to the same command we used above, envelope digest, we get back a different digest. Now, when you're comparing crypto digests, the first few characters will be the same because that's CBOR header information, but the last eight characters will always be different because they are, are a CRC32. So if you quickly look at the end of a crypto digest, you'll always be able to tell whether two are the same. In this case, obviously they're not. So we extracted a different digest, which is not, remember the, the envelope Alice knows Bob contains the subject and an assertion. This is the digest of the entire envelope. This is just the digest of the envelope, which is the subject. So let's just for reference, let's look at that envelope notation. Now let's type a more complex command. What we're doing here is we're saying envelope assertion at zero, which means we're extracting the first assertion. This is the envelope we're extracting from. And then we're going to pipe that into envelope extract object, which you now remember this is a predicate and an object. So we're gonna get the envelope, which is just the Bob string. And then we're gonna ask the digest. So this is basically saying, get the first assertion, extract the object of that assertion, and show us the digest. So when we run this, we get a third digest. So this is the kind of way that you can drill down into an envelope and ask for an, a digest. And because every assertion of an envelope has to be unique, you, there are no duplicate assertions, every assertion is guaranteed to have a unique digest. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about elision. Since we know how to get digests, we can transform an envelope in interesting ways. Elision means to remove various parts of the envelope without changing its digest. And to do this, we use the elide command. And for example, if I just want to get the, I'm just going to get the subject digest of our envelope into a shell variable here, subject digest, and then I'm going to run in backticks, envelope extract, type envelope, Alice knows Bob, and we get, I'm going to get the digest. So again, if we echo that, there's the digest. If we want to produce a version of the envelope with its subject elided, we now provide that digest to the elide removing command. And that looks like this. Envelope elide removing. This is the envelope to elide. This is the subject digest. And then we're gonna pipe that directly into the envelope format command so we can see what, what the result is. As we can see, the subject has been elided. It's literally not there anymore, but its digest still is. So the Merkle tree of the envelope is still the same. We can actually provide any number of digests here in this position, which is called the target set. And because we're using elide removing, it basically means it's going to go through the envelope recursively. And if it finds any sub envelopes that match anything in the target set, it will elide it. There's also another command called elide revealing, which is more useful in, in some cases where you just want to reveal particular things about an envelope, which does the opposite. If it's not in the target set, then it gets elided. So for example, here we're gonna provide two different digests. The first is for the subject, as we did above, and the digest that represents the object of the assertion and remember that we, we already extracted that once. So the, uh, let me make sure I still have that echo. Bob Digest. Okay, so let's create that. Okay, so there's our Bob Digest. And now we're going to 
Elide removing from this envelope, the subject and the Bob object, and then pass that to format. So here we have it. The subject is elided and so is the object. So all we've left is the predicate. So this is important. The elided version of the envelope we produced has the same digest as the original non-elided envelope. This means that things like cryptographic signatures that you added to the envelope as assertions, unless they're themselves elided, will still verify. So let's compare the original envelope's digest to the, the elided version's digest. Let's get back to the digest of Alice Knows Bob, and then we're going to compare that to the digest of the envelope that's been el elided. So again, envelope elided we're removing, here's the envelope, the subject, and the object, and we pass that to the format command, and we get the exact same digest as we did before. So even though we've literally removed information, we're still getting the same digest overall. Okay, so now let's talk about symmetric key encryption. So the envelope tool provides two commands, encrypt and decrypt, to perform symmetric key encryption of the envelope subject. So if you say envelope help, you'll see that it has the generate command. And this is a set of utilities to generate and convert various objects. So if I say envelope help generate, you can generate a common identifier, digests directly, a symmetric encryption keys, nonce, and private and public key bases and seeds. So for now, let's just generate a random symmetric encryption key. So I'm gonna say key gets and backticks envelope generate key. Let's echo that. And here we see it's a UR crypto key. So once we have this, we produce a version of our example envelope that has its subject encrypted. And so let's assign that to a variable encrypted, envelope encrypt, the name of our envelope, and then the key we're going to use. So let's then format that. So we're gonna say envelope, encrypted. So now it's the same envelope. In fact, it has the same hash, but now the subject is not elided as we did before. The data is still there, but it's encrypted with that symmetric key. So it's important to realize that when you encrypt, the encryption process uses random data. It uses a nonce, a number used once, and this keeps people from correlating separately encrypted things. But the hash remains the same. So for example, if I just encrypt this, you see this is the encrypted envelope. It's the same one we just produced before. It has the same data. This is the actual UR of the envelope. But if I do it again, you'll see that we have different data. And again, you don't need to look at the whole UR. All you ever need to look at is the last eight characters, even probably the last four characters, three, four characters, enough to sell if they're the same. This is the exact same envelope, encrypted with the exact same key, and yet it's two different sets of data. And that's because encryption uses random information. But the envelope that's been encrypted is still the same envelope, and it has the same hashes as well. So if I get the digest of the whole envelope, and then I also produce the digest of the encrypted version of the envelope, you see that these two hashes are the same. And when the digests are the same, you have the same data at its core, even though the actual encrypted data is different. Sometimes you don't want the hash to be the same, and that's why you can add salt, and we'll talk about salt later. But generally speaking, there's a number of different transformations you can do on envelopes, elision and encryption, that don't change the Merkle tree. And there's other things you can do, like adding assertions that do change it. So I mentioned that when we use the encrypt command, we're only encrypting the subject of the envelope you see here. So what if we want to encrypt the whole envelope? So that's pretty easy as well, because we can actually wrap an envelope in an envelope. And when we encrypt a wrapped envelope, we're encrypting everything inside it. So let's look at what a wrapped envelope looks like. So we've just created a wrapped envelope, and we're going to pass that to the format command. So now you see that there's an outer pair of curly braces here. And this means that this envelope that we've already been familiar with is now wrapped in an outer envelope. And there could be also assertions added here as well. So whenever you have an envelope, you have, can have assertions. This envelope, outer envelope, has no assertions. This inner envelope has one assertion. And when there's one or more assertions, you'll always see these square brackets. And whenever there's a wrapped envelope, you'll see these curly braces. So now that we have that, we can, uh, well, let's point out, first of all, that this outer envelope, here's the our original envelope, but now if we look at the digest of the wrapped envelope, you see it's different. And that's because this is in fact a different envelope. It's got different data. You can't expect the same thing. So to use the contents of the inner envelope, you'd have to unwrap it. We'll talk about that in a bit. So if we want to encrypt the wrapped envelope, here's the command to do that. Wrapped encrypted, envelope encrypt, the, the wrapped envelope with the same symmetric key we've been using. And then let's format that. So here, the envelope notation just says it's encrypted. It's the whole envelope. It's this whole outer envelope and everything inside it, but it's now been encrypted. If we actually look at the digest of the wrapped envelope, here it is. 
And if we actually compare that to the digest of the wrapped encrypted envelope, they are the same. So if we want to recover the original envelope, we have to reverse the steps. First we decrypt, then we unwrap. So here in the first line, we're going to envelope decrypt the wrapped encrypted envelope with the key. And that gives us back this configuration. And we say envelope extract wrapped. That unwraps the envelope. And now we format the contents. And there's our original envelope back. So now let's talk about signatures. We were using symmetric key encryption. Signatures are one way of using public key encryption. To do public key encryption, you need both a private key and public key. Let's start by noting that the generate tool lets you generate private keys just like this. And this is a UR crypto priv keys or private key base, and you can generate public keys from this. There are also ways of generating, for example, if you're familiar with uh, blockchain commons, seed tool is a starting point for a lot of things. Let's for example, if we take a seed, this UR crypto seed was generated using seed tool. And then we can also then generate private keys using the same envelope generate command, but we're going to use the seed here and assign this to a shell variable. And so now when we echo that, we have a different private keys. This was created using a shorter seed, which is why it's shorter. It's still very secure. This is using at least 16 bytes of randomness. So now we have a private keys and we're going to want to distribute the public key version of this. We're going to sign with a private key and verify signatures with the public keys. So here's how we would generate our public keys from our private keys. This is assigned to a shell variable, envelope generate, pub keys with our private keys. And then when we echo that, you see that public key bases are a bit longer than private keys, but this lets other people who receive them both encrypt data to us as well as verify signatures from us. So now we can actually sign our envelope. Here's the command to do that. So assign it to a shell variable signed, envelope signed, the name of our envelope with private keys, private keys. So before we said double hyphen key for symmetric key encryption, here we're signing with our private keys. And then let's go ahead and format this. Now we have Alice knows Bob verified by signature. That looks pretty good, except one problem. This has added an assertion to this, but what does this verify? Does it verify knows Bob? Does it verify Alice? The answer is that the assertions apply to the subject. In this case, verified by signature only applies to the subject. This could be changed and not invalidate the signature. Additional assertions could be added and not invalidate the signature. Only if Alice is changed will the signature fail to verify. How do we get around this? We have wrapping and wrapping to the rescue. So if we wrap it first, if we say wrapped signed gets envelope subject wrapped, we've done this before, and we pipe that to envelope sign with private keys, just like we did a moment ago, then we've wrapped the envelope, including its assertions, and then we've signed that. So now our original envelope is all enclosed in this outer envelope, and then these, this new assertion verified by, and then the signature has been added to that. And that way now nothing in this can change without invalidating the signature. So if we send this to someone who has a public key, they can now verify the signature. So how would they do that? So this is the command envelope verify. This is the wrapped signed envelope, and this is the public keys we generate above here. So the fact that it printed back the original envelope means the verification passed. And the reason why it does this is so that you can continue to use the pipe character to pipe this to other things in your script. Verification fails, the shell script will exit with an error. If for some reason you don't want to do that, you can always add the silent flag. And then it will still exit with an error if the verification fails, but it won't print the envelope if it succeeds. Uh, for example, if we generated a bad set of keys, so for example, here we're going to say bad pub keys, envelope generate private keys, so it's going to generate brand new private keys, and then pipe that into envelope generate public keys from that. So we're going to get a bad set of public keys here. And then we're going to try to verify our envelope with the wrong keys. We get unverified signature. So that's what it looks like when a signature fails to verify. And that could happen because you're using the wrong key to verify or the wrong public keys to verify, or it could happen because the envelope has been tampered with. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about backing up. Blockchain Commons has our SSKR, our, our, our sharded secret key reconstruction technology. SSKR lets you shard an envelope into several shares. I can take a secret, which is one envelope, and turn it into three envelopes, which I can distribute among three friends. And then if I ever need to recover them, I only need to say get two of them back. Any two of them will do, but any of my friends can't use their individual envelope to recover my secret. So for example, how would that look? So let's take a command here. 
So this is saying share envelopes. This is where we're using the envelope SSKR split command. And we're specifying a group of two of three. So we're going to generate three envelopes, any two of which are necessary. And then this is the envelope that we are sharding. And then we're taking the results of this command and this outer outer parentheses are basically mean assign this as an array to this variable, share envelopes. So if we just echo share envelopes, we're gonna get a long set of strings here. Notice this is a UR envelope and there's a space and another UR envelope and then a space and another UR envelope. So these are so space separated, but this is also in an array now. So let's make this a little bit simpler. We're going to use three commands to assign elements of that array to three separate shell variables. So now if I say, for example, if I just echo share one, that's just a single envelope and share two and three are the same or similar. They're obviously not the same envelope, but because each of them only has part of the key in it, not even a part, it's mathematically sharded so that uh, you can't even determine anything about the original secret from any of the parts. So if, what does it look like if we actually format one of these envelopes? We have an encrypted message, you've seen that already, and an SSKR share. An SSKR share is just one of those shares that our process of sharding created. And inside that is the actual symmetric key needed to unencrypt this. And so if you only have one of these, because we said two of three, that's not enough to retrieve that secret and decrypt the original message. If we wanted to say, take the share one and share three and actually recover the original, we could do it this way. Recovered, envelope, SSKR, join, and then the two shares. And now if we say envelope, recovered, now we've recovered our original secret. But let's assume one of our friends tries to recover the share just for the share you gave them. So here we have, we're trying to do it with just one share in this case. It says invalid shares. So if you added share one or share three to this, it would work. So for example, let's take share three, add that, there it is. So any two of three, and this is very flexible. You can have more than one group. You can have two of three and three of five with a threshold of one group or two groups. There's quite a few th different ways of using SSKR. So finally, I want to talk a little bit about salt. So envelopes with the same content produce the same digests, even when they've been alighted or encrypted. And this can make identical or even similar envelopes correlatable. That means somebody can tell that they contain the same message, even though they're in different forms. One's encrypted, one's not, for instance. Let's take the previous example. Here we have a wrapped envelope. We're going to wrap the Alice Knows Bob's envelope, and then we're going to encrypt that. So envelope encrypt the wrapped envelope with our key. And then we're going to print out both digests of the wrapped envelope and the encrypted envelope. So we're wrapping and we're encrypting and we're going to compare their digests. And as you can see, they have the same digests. That's very useful in certain cases. But if you don't want that to be correlatable this way, you can use salt. So the salt command lets us add an assertion with random data. If we do this before we encrypt, the unencrypted subject will be the same but the digest will be different. So here we are saying envelope, salt, Alice knows Bob. So this is gonna add an, another assertion with random data to it, and then we're going to wrap that. So if we do that, then we type envelope, salted, wrapped. So here's the outer envelope we've, we added secondly, and here's the salt. And this changes the digest of the entire envelope. So now if we encrypt that, and if we compare just the one we encrypted before, we wrapped and encrypted it, with the one we salted, before we encrypted, we have two different digests. So here's the same digest and here. So in this case, there's the same two digests even when it encrypted. Here, it doesn't match because we added the salt. So salting is a very convenient way of making sure that even the digests are different. Remember, encryption uses random data to perform the actual encryption without disturbing the original data. But the digest remains the same in an envelope. So you add salt if you don't want either of those to be correlatable.